Okay, so here we are inside of the Affinity Publisher interface. And if you pay attention to the screen, you can see I've created myself a quick list of cast and crew job descriptions and names. And what we want to do with this is we want to separate our job description from the name. So we're going to have all of our job descriptions over to the left hand side of the page and the names over on the right hand side. And the way that we're going to achieve this is by using tab stops. So if we go ahead and first of all edit our text, I'm going to go and hit command or control a on my keyboard that is going to select all of our text what we're going to do after that is we're going to make our way over to the right hand side of the page and you want to be inside of your paragraph tab you guys may be in layers by default just go ahead and choose paragraph then inside of here you want to find the option that says tab stops which is right there once you've found that go ahead and just open that up Inside of here at the moment it says no tab stops so all we've got to do is add one ourselves and the way we'll do that is by using this button right here. So go ahead and add a new tab stop. Then what we need to do is just change this default number from 30 millimeter to anything that you would like to use. So I'm working in millimeters on this document so you guys may see inches or points and pixels inside of here. All you've got to do is just change the number to be something that you are happy with. But you can go ahead and change this later on if you're not happy with what you put as a base. So for now I'll go ahead and just put in 80 to be quick. And once I hit enter on my keyboard it doesn't look as though anything has changed. However if I now start coming in here and separating all of these names using the tab button on my keyboard. I'll go ahead and just hit tab on Leo. You can see I've now got this big gap right here in between the job description and the name. So I'll go ahead and make my way through the list and just hit tab on the keyboard on each one of these names. Just until I've got all of these names over to the other side. Okay, so I've now moved all of my names over to the right hand side using the tab button on my keyboard. And now I've deselected it, we can see what we've got. So this right here is the kind of thing that you would see at the end of a movie in all of the credits for the cast and crew. Alternatively, you could also use this in the table of contents if you had the chapter name followed by the chapter number. Or maybe you have a business such as a hairdresser's where you have all the different hairstyles followed by the prices on the other side. However, what you may find that you may also want to do is go and change some of this spacing. If you're not happy with what you've already created, all we've got to do is go back inside of here. Once again, hit command or control A to select all. Make our way back over to the right hand side to where we created our tab stop. And all we've got to do is just adjust these arrows up or down to move that either closer or further away. But just keep in mind if you go a little bit too big with the numbers then the names will start separating onto a separate line as you can see right here. So you may want to go ahead and just bring that back to make sure it fits on your document. Alternatively what you may also want to do is I'll go ahead and just deselect for a moment. You can see that we have all of our names right here lined up on the left hand side of the page. You may want to have all of these lined up on the right hand side of the page just to look a little bit better. If that is the case all we've got to do is go back into our text once again. We'll go ahead and select all of that. Then just go back over to the right hand side and just in this drop down menu right here next to our default spacing. You're just going to change from the left over to the right. And at the moment it's just moved all this back over but all we've got to do is just adjust this spacing and just make that go all the way to the other side of the page. As you can see start separating once again. Just bring that towards the edge just somewhere you're happy with and then I'll deselect that so we can see what we've got. And that already looks a lot better in my opinion so that is the way that I'd personally have it myself. Another thing that you may want to do is use those dotted lines in between the job description as well as in names. So if you want to go ahead and do that we'll go and just double tap on here again and select all of the text. Make our way back over to the right hand side. This time round instead of changing from the left to the right we'll go and choose the drop down menu next to that on the right hand side. And inside of here we're going to choose glimp. And once we've done that, you can see we have all of these lines right here, all these dotted lines, sorry, which are going from the job description to the names. And you may find that some of these look a little bit too close to the letter, such as this one right here next to the J. So that dot is a little bit too close. And you may find that as well on a few of the different names, such as the K right there on Kristen, or maybe up here somewhere on that K as well. If you want to go ahead and just remove some of those, all you simply got to do is come in before the letter, hit spacebar on your keyboard, and then that will remove one of those glimpses you can see. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing on another name, so that J right there. Go ahead and hit spacebar, that will remove that dot as well, and we'll do it down here on the K, hit spacebar, and that 
once we go ahead and just deselect, that is what we are left with. So that looks really good. And like I said, this is something you may use on the table of contents or a menu of some sort. However, if you decide that you want to go ahead and change any of this, all we've got to do is simply go back into our text, select all of that. We can go back over to the right hand side and we can turn off our glimpse to maybe an underline, as you can see right there. Or we can go ahead and change that to a strike through. Or alternatively, you can go ahead and just turn it off altogether. So we just got what we started with. You can always come back in at any point and change your space. And if you're not happy with what you've got, Okay, so before I go ahead and wrap this video up, I just want to mention one more way that you can go and change the spacing on your text. So if you decide that you don't want to use the arrows right here going either up or down, or you don't want to double tap and type this in with your keyboard, another way that we can do this is by using the ruler. So if we make sure we got our text selected, up on our context menu bar on the top right hand side, we have this option right here that says frame text ruler. Go ahead and just turn that on and then you can see we have this ruler now appear on top of our text. So all we've got to do is just drag from this corner right here and once you start dragging that it'll start moving the text. At the moment I haven't selected all this text so nothing is happening. So I'll go ahead and just put that back for a moment. I'll hit command or control A to select all my text. Once again, I'll just start to drag that over and you can see how it now starts moving it closer to our job descriptions. So you can get a lot more precise if you want to use the ruler just to make sure you get the exact spacing that you are going for. Alternatively, we can also do that from the other side. We can drag the job descriptions closer to our names. It's entirely up to you what you would like to do with this. But that really is how easy it is to use a tab stop function inside of Affinity Publisher. So I hope you found today's video useful. If you did, then please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button as that really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find my content. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in the next video.